Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Dwayne Bussey of Bolt Marketing. Well, we've got mixed trade, I would call it, in both grain and livestock futures this morning. Uh, Dwayne, let's talk about grains first. The one exception, soybeans are seeing some pressure here this morning. And, you know, let's talk about that market because so far we've held contract lows, but we keep testing them and retesting them. So is that going to hold? Uh, that's a great question. I think to hold contract lows and to actually go higher, you're going to need some sort of new bullish story. And I, I think I have what it could be. Uh, you need some sort of drought talk in South America, some sort of weather scare there where the production matters right now. Right. And in Argentina, I wouldn't say is, is dry right now. They had rains last week, but some areas missed the rains and they have a dry week this week and forecast next week looks fairly dry as well. So you, you know how these markets are. You, you get 10 days of dry weather and a dry forecast that could fire up the markets a little bit. That's kind of the only bullish news I've got going for soybeans right now. I shouldn't say that, Michelle, we, we've had plenty of export news, soybean yeah. oil sales this morning, but boy, the market like yesterday, a nice up day felt a little bit better on the chart. And then we got to take it all back today. It, it is pretty frustrating as a bull right now. Yeah. And it seems like we're in this tug of war between what you just said, good demand, Exports have been picking up. You've got good demand for soybean oil, but you still have looming tariffs. You still have that South American record Brazil crop still kind of in the backdrop, don't you? Yep. Over the weekend here, everyone was inching up. All the private forecasters are inching up the total crop size from South America. I mean, we're talking now above above records, you know, 20 million, 30 million metric ton higher than last year's crop size. And it's like, that is a lot of soybeans for the global demand to eat up. So that was negative to start the week. And then, yeah, we get the export sales and, you know, finally our cash sales have caught up. Our export sales have caught up to the normal pace, which is very impressive after the slow start. But boy, the you get those daily sales announcements, the market can't even bounce off of that in the morning. So it, it it's tough right now, like you said, a tug of war. And then you mentioned the tariffs, man. I mean, that's just looming overhead for quite some time here, right? And, and China put some sanctions on us on the key metals overnight. Now that's back to the current administration, not the new tariffs, but sure doesn't seem like they were going to play ball and just back off. And we didn't expect them to either. Right. And corn seems to be kind of stuck in that same tug of war. Like we said, really good demand. Ethanol numbers are good. Crush is good there. But mm -hmm. we just can't get through resistance areas on the charts, right? No, we can't. And part of that is probably the wheat complex near contract lows and soybean oil, soybeans at contract lows, you know, testing those lows. So it's hard for corn to go up by itself, but it, by itself in a bubble, I, I think the soybean, the corn market, I'm sorry, is fairly friendly. Like you said, all that demand news you just mentioned is good. We've got a U.S. report next Tuesday. And I started looking at that already because markets are a bit boring. And I mean, there's a chance with an increase in demand, USDA lowers our ending stock below 1.9 billion. And I, I think that would kind of generate a little bit of bullish enthusiasm. Maybe the funds would at least go long and push this market up, but it's hard to do it when other markets are dragging it down. No doubt. And you've got export pace right now, like 30, what, two to 4% yeah. above last year, but USDA really hasn't factored that in yet, have they? No. And that goes back to the tariff talk you mentioned. Everyone's assuming all these purchases are front loaded and, and maybe they are. And USDA, you know, they, they can slow play export demand, right? You know, they can wait each month and just add a little bit more, add a little bit more. We'll just need to see this demand continue past our normal export window and get into the South America crop. And, and then we really would have to make some quick adjustments. So Corn could have a very bullish story in 2025, but you know we're not going to run out of corn until spring, summer, right? We've just had to harvest. So I can talk huge about export demand and say that I'm way above USDA's projections for export demand, but it doesn't matter right now when we have plenty of corn on hand. No doubt. And like you said, at times, soybeans like today hold corn back. Sometimes it's a wheat market. What are you watching or resistance areas there that we would have to get through because the funds are already long. What would interest them in maybe pushing that position a little farther? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think, you know, if we can get a bullish US to report and some more export sales, maybe a little bit of drought talk in Argentina, which I'm getting way in front of myself there, but I think 447, that 450 area is your first resistance target for March corn, um, which isn't that far away. 
But sadly, that might take quite a bit of fund buying to do that because we've got to remember the funds just went from this massive short position to long 100,000 contracts and we rallied like 30 cents. You know, So even a 10 or 15 cent rally is a good rally. And I will say when you get there, even though I'm sounding fairly bullish for 25 corn, which uh, when, let's just say I'm friendly. At that point, I think you can make some corn sales, you know, capture yeah. whatever carry is still left in the market. We got to remember just just making money in 24 and 25 is good enough. Don't don't have the six dollar corn in the back of your mind. And wheat is trying to bounce this morning, despite the fact that the dollar is a little bit stronger. You know, is that just some short covering because, you know, we just scored contract lows in KC wheat here yesterday or the day before? I think so. I think it's just people looking at a chart, trying to pick a bottom, buy it off of that. You know, you, you watch the Chicago wheat where the higher volume is. We've held the contract lows for now on the March contract. And then just a popular trade is to, to buy it and put a stop just below the contract lows. So I think that's the buying you're seeing today. And uh, there isn't much of it. It better close near the highs. Otherwise, it's going to just test those contract lows again. Yeah. And globally, prices are pulling us down, right? Yeah, that's the, the trade talk is that Black Sea cash wheat prices are lower, Russian wheat prices are lower, trying to find demand. But they're also countering that with, you know, the Russian wheat crop right now, the winter wheat crop is in very poor conditions and production right. should be down next year. So you'd think you could generate a little bit better price. But I think the problem is right now, everyone who wants wheat has it. Um, maybe there's a bullish story in 25, but uh, not right now, I guess. Uh, cattle consolidating a little bit today. We've traded a little two-sided after a higher close yesterday. So do you think this market is waiting for cash or can we just not take out resistance levels or was it the lower box beef values yesterday? Uh, all of the above um, on that multiple choice question there. I, I think, you know, box beef being down a couple dollars yesterday afternoon always starts the market off a little bit negative. But the interesting point, there is some technical resistance and it's not really chart resistance. It's just psychological. I think the 190 point for Feb live cattle, the 260 point for January feeders, we are trade right up to that. And then we need some good news to push us through that. And I think it would be higher cash cattle trade later this week. You know, we trade some 192 or something like that. I think February they can push through. But, you know, it's early in the week right now. Packers have got bids $2 lower than last week. I don't think they're going to get it there. I, that's just where you start from, right? And then the negotiation happens. So if you can get that cash cattle trade higher, you know, Thursday or Friday, then we can push through. So, yeah, today probably just a setback, quiet day. And hogs are a little bit lower to start the day here, but are the funds going to buy that break or is this part of a little bit bigger correction or not? Uh, I, I, I want to go out on a limb and say we should have seen the top last week in hogs and February hogs, at least uh, kind of raced up on the whole Canadian tariff news and it really shouldn't affect the February hog market. Cash and cutouts are trending lower, which they tend to do this time of year. So I, I'm leaning a little bit bearish the hog market, but boy, like you said, the funds are record long, so they could protect those positions, shoot it back up. I kind of think that's what they did yesterday. And now they try to weasel out of their positions. They're very, very good at that, too. We'll talk in a month, Michelle, and we'll find out that they're out of all their long positions somehow. Yeah. And cutout values kind of rolled over yesterday. I don't know if that mm -hmm. was, you know, part of today's break early on, but we'll see, I guess. Yeah, it, it should. And the U.S. dollar being high, that doesn't help our exports there either, does it? No, true. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. We invest you with Bolt Marketing. That is Markets Now.